Hello, this is Tokyo State of Mind, episode 4. We always try to bring you the best stories about people living in Tokyo, about their dreams, aspirations, lessons they learned. And today, I am very happy to interview the co host of the show, my dear friend Katya Ulanova, who is here today to share her inspirational story of chasing her dreams. So, hi, Katya. Hello, Hamida. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me today. <laughs> It's your studio. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. We actually have、uh, encountered, encountered a lot of troubles today with our shooting because、uh, since the beginning,、um, my computer died. <laughs> and then we had so much trouble with Mixer. But thanks God, we have our elephant, <laughs> Fyodor, who helped us to fix the whole thing. Situation. Yeah. Actually, I'm happy that we like, fixed all the problems with the help、uh, and、uh, by ourselves. And I'm happy to sit here next to you because you know, I'm usually on the other side of the camera. So today I'm excited、uh, of talking in the camera. Yeah. But you're doing a great job. Anyways, even behind the scenes,、yeah. she's doing a great job.、Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and、um, you know, I'm very. Surprised, like、uh, the moment when、um, I realized that it was not just you, but also your husband who came to Tokyo by Max program, and that you both guys are doing masters at、um, graduate schools, and that,、um, and like just seeing you both like being together, it's it just so inspiring because I've met a lot of people, and、um, I think it's already hard to come by yourself, but to bring someone. And to go through this process together, also given the、mm. fact that you both guys are from different countries,、mm. um, it was something that I've never seen before.、Yeah. And I always wanted to hear about your story about how did、um, this whole situation s t a r t e d You know, it's very easy to go to Japan as a spouse because you can make a, a spouse visa. But yeah, coming to Japan as both as max scholarships. Uh, winners,、uh, it was for, like a challenge for us. So, I was always interested in、uh, studying foreign languages、uh, when I was at school. So, I shared,、uh, I wanted to become an interpreter, and I shared that、uh, dream、uh, with a woman who was invited to our、uh, house to do massage、uh, because I had some problems with my back. So, I shared. That dream with her, and she said, like, it would be so boring for her just going around people she、uh, doesn't know and、uh, just translate what they say, not participating in t o the conversation. So, as I was a child who was、uh, easily affected by others' opinions, I believed her and I gave up on that dream. And、uh, yeah, after that, I, I didn't know who I want to be actually. So, my dream about coming to Japan uh, started uh, when I was 14, maybe.、Uh, you know how it happens you're watching anime, you're reading manga, you're captured by this mystic world called Japan, and I created my own world. So, it was a、uh, like、world where Everybody are kind,、uh, where you can find where dreams come true, you can find love there. So, yeah, this world was Japan for me. So,、uh, actually, I was about to enter after university,、uh, after、um, school, university, at the major of Asian studies and、uh, Japanese language, but.、Uh, There was one requirement. I had to、uh, pass the history test, which I hated at the time. I hated history class. I said it was impossible. So I gave up on the dream so easily. On the other hand, I really like to be surrounded by the people who I like, like my friends, my family. So, as most of my friends, they went to Uh, natural science class.、Uh, so, as they most went there, and I wanted to be in the flow, I didn't want to、uh, 
go other way. So I said myself, like, if you, if everybody can do math and physics, then you can do it too. So that's how I graduated from school and entered um, University of Oil and Gas and became a petroleum engineer. So just forgetting the dream about Japan. And what did um, happen that you went back to dreaming to Japan? Was it like you um, started having this um, life as a student at that university and then you realized, and there was some bugging feeling inside that, hey, I actually want something more, like, or I want some uh, to go through some adventures. Hmm. So actually, I didn't have any feeling like inside me I thought I was living very cool life. So I, I did. I I had a very cool life in university. It was so much fun. New city because I moved to Moscow. Uh, new friends. I found the love of my life who is my boy, um, who is my husband now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the whole university life was so much fun. And uh, um, I was serious about becoming a petroleum engineer. I was uh, I had participated in uh, internships uh, of uh, leading petroleum uh, oil companies uh, of Russia. Uh, yeah, I forgot about Japan completely, but at some point uh, things started to change. Like I showed my boyfriend. Uh, anime uh, and uh, manga so I made further watch Naruto in Japanese language with Russian subtitles which was like incredible at that time because he he, he was adamant about subtitles so uh, that was incredible and somehow he started so he was captured by that world too so I was surprised and uh, then like I shared my dream with him like I told him about my old dream of going to Japan and he said if you want your dream come true then what are you waiting for so we bought tickets and uh, I planned my trip our trip to Japan with so much excitement that I haven't done anything in my life actually so it was almost the same as I imagined it didn't disappoint me at all it was maybe even better because I shared that world with person I love at that time so uh, yeah it was incredible and uh, we really enjoyed it and you know uh, a few days before flying back home we were walking on the one of those uh, Akihabara streets you know Akihabara district it's like full of lights and music and anime stuff so we were walking there and holding hands and feeling the right atmosphere I just said how it would be wonderful if we moved here if we lived here he didn't say anything at that time but I think this idea has set in his mind since then so he said again he said it again if you want your dream become true you dream about living in japan uh become true then what are we waiting for <laughs> he said it again what a decided yeah. person <laughs> yes so he uh found that max program we discovered everything about it together and uh, we start he started preparing for it so quickly he got he got the english language courses japanese language courses uh, he was he was so purposeful so hard working I had never seen him like like this before and I was completely shocked like how he was uh, into all this thing and I was trying to catch up with him but uh, I think I couldn't at that moment so actually I started doing all this like preparation Japanese language and English language classes after six months after coming back home and after graduation I found a job in Moscow in a small hydrogeological company 
yeah it was uh, hard and uh, the job at the first time it was interesting but then i noticed that nobody value you as a specialist as person nobody cared about your personal growth so i didn't like that job actually uh but I, I knew how it was important to stay in Moscow at that time because you cannot find uh, such good quality uh, language classes in province because uh, yeah in Moscow it's uh, very high standard of the schools so yeah th there was was one moment when not only me but also my family realized that all this idea about going to Japan is is not a joke, it's very serious. So I got uh, invitation to the interview, one of the petroleum companies of Russia. There was a high chance that they would hire me. And, uh, but again, realizing how it was important to stay in Moscow at the time, even because the requirement was to go back to Siberia and work there. So I decided uh, to stay in Moscow and I canceled that interview uh, just crying because my mind was telling me that I make a made wrong wrong decision and uh, but my heart actually I think it's believe it believed in in the best but my parents they maybe they were shocked a little bit uh, as my father has been working in oil industry too for 25 years. He warned me that I might lose a good opportunity for good career in the oil industry. So, yeah, um, they they supported me a lot. Without uh, like without their support, I couldn't do that. But uh, at that time, maybe they didn't understand me, but they tried to support me a lot. So I remember a few months later, we were driving in the car and the mom was sleeping back on the seat and uh, I was talking to my father. Actually, it was blizzard outside and it was night. So it was very uh, hard to drive in that condition. So that's why maybe the tension between us was high. I don't know, maybe because uh, of... Uh, the weather condition maybe because of the conversation but uh, my father he uh, was saying that he is worried about my future he he's not sh he wasn't sure if i made the right decision so i just asked him like that have you ever gambled like uh, i'm not talking about casinos but the life he said no never and i said like but I have, I made my bid, so I I don't know if it would work, but I made my choice. So they they supported me a lot. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure like still at that moment it was quite a fight between your mind and heart in that way. Yeah. And um how did you get through that? What made you believe that even though even if you fail or um even something goes wrong, that still you made the right choice? I mean I was pretty confident. I thought I would win, and uh, as I said, we pre we pre was preparing for the next. So as further was a Belarusian. He is Belarusian citizen. He went to the Minsk to uh, take an exam there, uh, max test, and I stayed in Moscow to take the test in Moscow. And uh, as a result, he passed, and I failed. So that was an uh, unpredictable scenario <laughs> that I didn't imagine in my head. I was completely uh, crushed. I was heartbroken. I was uh, like crying. I don't know. Of course, I was glad uh, about uh, him passing, going to Japan. But uh, yeah, I felt like my dream was stolen actually because uh, i i shared that dream with person and you imagine both of you going at the same time there 
together with, to Japan, but he did it so quickly. I mean, uh, he he just uh, he just did it <laughs> like like no, nothing was complicated for him. Not, everything was easy for him, and I was I was completely lost. Fyodor had a flight from Minsk to Tokyo and I went with him so at, at the Minsk airport when it was time to say goodbye he embraced me and I started crying so much I couldn't keep in my tears and uh, um, in my head there were a lot of thoughts like uh, when will I see him again Will Japan change him because he's going for a long time? Will we still love each other after this long time, this and big distance uh, relationship? And uh, would that relationship survive after all of this? So I didn't know the answers on that that questions at that time. So after he's he had gone. Uh, I stayed for hours at the Minsk airport, like shedding tears and not trying to uh, hide them. So there was a man, he was a Brazilian reporter uh, who had a flight back home. So he saw me crying and he gave me an Easter bread and a cup of tea. It was a week before Easter. so. That gesture of the generosity of kindness, it calmed me down. It was like God gave me a sign, like, don't cry, everything's gonna be okay. So sometimes we all need to be kind to each other. Like you don't know the person, you don't know the current situation, you don't know the past of that person. Maybe if the person is not good, maybe he has done or she has done a lot of bad things, but still... If you do a little thing, uh, you you would probably save that person. I agree that it's it's so powerful when it's just one little thing, and just one little thing, pretty much nothing yeah. special, and you can make person's day by doing that, yeah. giving coffee or saying hi or or even just smiling. And if that Brazilian reporter is listening to this podcast, we would like to. Yeah, I say thank like, you. I would like to thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, after Minsk, I went back to Moscow with a whole, with big emptiness in my heart, but my mind was full of thoughts. Like, I, we could, Fyodor and I, we could have gotten married in Russia, and I could have uh, gone with him as a wife, but I didn't want it. To be I wanted to do it by my own like it was my dream I had to make my dream come true that was the whole point uh, which I wanted to do so uh, I knew my mistake from that failure I, I knew my mistake completely I knew that it was my English so I said myself like start like learning English as you never uh, known it before start absorb knowledge and vocabulary as much as possible my best friend from school and uh, my friends from the work from that hydrogeological company they are still my good friends now and they saw me how I worked hard on uh, yeah passing max scholarship and uh, they supported me a lot so still I wasn't alone and uh, that helped me a lot so and further went to japan like can you imagine you're in the new country new city you entered one of the best universities in the world and you have new friends new life and uh, of course i was afraid of him like forgetting me but he never forgot me so he called me every day uh, and uh, describe what happened with him during the day in details. So it's so important to share uh, with your partner uh, the time, the whole 
your life not only good things but also bad things ups and downs of your life so if if he um, went to do some sightseeing to the park or to Tokyo Sky Tree for example he would sh uh, put the video chat on to share all the sceneries with me because he knew it was important for me to share that moment with him and I think that our long distance relationships survived mostly because of his efforts like you could still go there and be with your fiance at the time like um t together in Japan without any problems but you decided to go there by your own terms why mm. was it so important to you I think it's my it was my own ambition I don't know maybe because if I didn't do that I wouldn't feel such fulfillment in my heart so I don't know why but my inner voice told me just you need to do it by yourself like you you can do it I believe I believed I could do that even after uh, that failure I still thought I could win so yeah I I think it was my kind of inner voice that told me that that you should do it by yourself and I took the test for the second time and finally I won and uh, that moment of the victory I couldn't believe that but it gave me so much power like I could change the world I don't know I like it's kind of superpower you have the your self-confidence raises uh, a lot and uh, but actually, at that time, I was uh, thinking that it wasn't because of my uh, efforts. It was just because I, I was lucky. So it still, I kind of didn't believe in myself. But uh, yeah, but still, it gave me a lot of self-confidence that I, ca I can do anything in the life. As Jay Shetty says, like when we when we are defeated we're blaming ourselves for the several weeks but when we finally win we celebrate it only one day so it was me actually when i failed for the first time i was crushed for the like for the weeks and uh, when i finally won i couldn't believe that i celebrated maybe one or two days and then uh, I started be concerning about oh, what's going to be next there is a lot of things to be done next and so on so it's it's very essential to hold on to feel the moment of the victory to taste it to memorize it because when you will have a tough times you we will probably have everybody of us we will have tough times next time so next time you would like reproduce this feeling in your heart and you would be and you will not lose this self-confidence next time when it's time to be confident i totally agree with that and i can definitely relate because i remember also when i got the results for my program I was like, wow, like for two minutes. And then I'm like, okay, it's it's normal. <laughs> What's going to be next? What should I be worried about? Like now I know when it's hap actually happening, I have to plan other stuff. But um, yeah, right. So what do you think um, your incredible journey with all these ups and downs with failures and trying again taught you? So looking back, my problems was that I didn't believe in my dream. <laughs> I didn't believe in myself and in my dream. I like I was I used to say that my dream was so stupid. I uh, shared that. I, so I said my friend Anna like, you know, my dream is so stupid. When people dreaming about something, they're dreaming about becoming a somebody like a doctor or a lawyer uh, or to start a business but not to be at the place like it's it's strange and i didn't take it serious like my dream 
So I said it to my friend Anna and she was like, you know, for somebody the right place change take an important role in changing their lives. So she was right and it was about me completely and uh, at that time I I didn't mm, I didn't pay attention to that. And also uh Ed Millet he says like don't grow your dream stale. Uh don't wait for the right moment for your dream to become true. So it was again about me. I didn't fulfill my dream. I I didn't believe in that. I didn't even try to make my dream come true on my own. Uh, yeah, I just abandoned my dream. And uh, that's why I think Fyodor, uh, he was more serious. He, uh, he like made this dream into the purpose. So he is very purposeful ch uh, person and uh, he transferred in into the purpose and his actions intentions they ins inspired me so much but i wasn't that serious and that was the problem also i wanted to say that sharing a dream with the right person with your person is so uh, essential because uh, you you become stronger together with that person with that person when you are growing together when you have the same purpose and uh, that's kind of cool but this this is a little bit ironic because uh, I have uh, made my dream come true with the help of the person who didn't know how to dream so he used to say that the dream is a useless thing that uh, you're that never should be become, become true. It looks like a good marriage, pretty much in both in like in a literal and a symbolic way, because you guys are married. Like yeah. there's always one person who has the vision, but maybe doesn't have skills yet. And there is the person with skills, but he or she doesn't have a vision, and they come together and they work on it, which is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, I also really agree with your point on how. Uh, people, uh, we tend to um, overthink, like when we dream about something, we're like, oh, I'm not ready for it yet. I got to do this and that. And you put it like on a shelf pretty mm. much because, and I think it takes courage to come as you are, to understand that, okay, I, I still suck at it. I, I still um, don't have this level. But just as you said, if you share it with the right person who, who may be, um, doesn't still see these things in you but sees the potential then it can become something bigger mm, that's right that's that's totally right and actually if you speak up your about your dream you will find a solution you will find a way you need just uh, you just really need to talk about it so somebody will uh, share maybe the link Somebody would share the information. Somebody will help you or something. In my case, it was somebody. It was the person I love who shared my interest and I didn't expect him to share. So it was the most, uh, most incredible moment because uh, we have been dating for the four years. So I, I've already known him pretty well and when I finally shared the, that dream with him and uh, he changed so much and I didn't expect him to change in that way and uh, yeah, I realized that this is my person, this is uh, the person who I want to, to live together and uh, to live in Japan, <laughs> of course. Japan uh, like is an incredible place where you can meet a lot of interesting people and uh, I'm glad that I came here and if I had like uh, if I had a choice to do it same way 
or to go to that job that I missed, I would definitely do the same way. <laughs> now when you know that it actually yeah, works. Yeah, right? now you know that you that everything works that. So yeah, so just uh, that's that's what I want to say that just listen your inner voice even if your society like your people surrounding you tells that it's wrong even if your parents tells you wrong if your own mind tell you you're wrong like don't listen it and just go and do it and then you will be happiest person in the world yes thank you so much for sharing the story um and you know i'm also glad that it it happened the way that it happened in the way that if you were able to pass this program um, with Fyodor, maybe I would never met you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Because you, you came at the same year as me and we took this Japanese class together. together now we're doing yeah. this podcast together. So I feel like it, it's all meant to be, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's that's something. I haven't thought about it in this way, but you're, you're completely <laughs> right. Because Fyodor met his person, like his people. And I met my people at right? the right time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's incredible. I I tell I tell you, Japan is a wonderful place. <laughs> it's it's definitely a wonderful place, and um, we hope that this story is gonna inspire more people to chase their dreams. And even if you guys are not sure about like what you're gonna do in in Japan, but you still want to come, like just come and you can figure out things on 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 your own here when you meet people when you get exposed to more experiences because that's what actually happened to me and Katya we had no idea what we we're gonna do here but we came we saw like <laughs> like at um as I broke your song but yeah I came I saw and <laughs> I did it <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah. yeah um so Thank you for watching for this episode. We are, we'll be happy to see you next week. As always, we're going to bring you amazing people with their stories um, and um, sh share with you some tips and beautiful lessons. So if you are aspiring to come to Japan or you're already living in Japan, you can have your best life and always get inspired. Follow our Instagram for more insights about our bloopers, um, about our... Um, failures and successes and see you next week bye bye, bye, -bye.